Uh, welcome to our event. I'm your host, Madalina Andre, GMS, former Global Mobility Coordinator, uh, currently Provider Relationship Manager with Expat Global. Uh, for those of you not yet familiar with Expat Global, uh, we are the first sustainable marketplace digital ecosystem uh, in the global mobility sector. To put it in plain English, uh, we are the first e-commerce uh, platform in global mobility area that enables direct relationship uh, between local experts and specialists providing specialized global mobility services, such as immigration, taxation, social security or destination services, and corporate clients in need of those services in all corners of the world. This is our ninth uh, uh, LinkedIn Live episode from the ne uh, Expat Nexus series, uh, a series which has as main uh, goal to become uh, a place where we can, we can share best practices in our industry, learn from each other, and most importantly, grow together. Uh, empathy, flexibility, uh, patience, respect, emotional intelligence, creativity, all of them important customer service skills you definitely need to have uh, um, in order to have a business uh, uh, that is successful. But is this enough, right? Are we creating an unforgettable experience? Should we go above and beyond to create such experiences in the first place? After all, I mean, isn't it just enough to do my job right? Um, our topic today is what makes some businesses uh, stand out from the crowd uh, and how customer service is actually one of the key differentiators between competing businesses. For this, I have by my side my two esteemed guests who actually and literally they eat, sleep and breathe customer <laughs> service. <laughs> Stefan Haney and Elena Antoniak. Uh, thank you very much, Stefan and Elena for joining us and for accepting my invitation. Um, I, would, I would kindly invite you to, to, to tell us a few words about yourselves, Stefan. My pleasure. Well, first off, thanks for having us here today. Uh, you know, I. Uh, Started off, I grew up in Michigan, worked in a bike shop uh, where as a young teenager, you're thinking about customers because you're selling stuff and, and people are older than you. Uh, but my career journey took me through 16 years at Amazon, 2003, 2019, where you certainly start off with customer obsession. I worked everywhere from supply chain Definitely. in uh, you know, uh, ordering product, which feels far, maybe far away from customers. All the way through the end of my career was uh, then worked with sellers, but then my end of my time at Amazon uh, was the actual Amazon detail product page. So you know, place where customers are pushing that button uh, to buy things. So uh, customers and, and delighting customers through that, and then since then, continue to work with uh, some great companies like Xpath and some others that are getting their start. Uh, most currently, I'm working with uh, my company called Foundry and Vantage. So Vantage is my consulting and Foundry is a brand portfolio company that I and some partners have started. Super, super. Elena? Uh, hi, hi. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm Elena. Uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur in the global mobility industry. I believe that uh, many of you know me, know me already. Uh, I have a background in law and uh, 14 years of experience, both as a global mobility expert and HR executive. Um, I'm deeply passionate about the global mobility industry from all the angles, uh, immigration law, tax and social security, uh, and as well the cultural impact on families. Uh, I discovered this industry uh, 14 years ago, and since then I've built one of the leading boutique firms in Eastern Europe, helping more than uh, 60,000 assignees and their families set up legally for work in and outside Europe. Um, and starting with uh, 2019, actually, we launched uh, Xpad Global, which is a tech ecosystem dedicated to the global mobility industry. Uh, we created the first marketplace in, in, in our industry, um, and I'm very happy to be here and share more about what we created so far and how our ecosystem actually serves the industry. Super, super. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot to both of you for this. Uh, before, before we begin, I'd like to thank all the attendees that, uh, that are with us. Um, we, have, we have Koshi Samuel. Hello, Koshi. Uh, we have Demetris Demetriades. Hi. Um, Lia Vali. Um, Andrea Georgie, Vivek, we have people are starting to, to, uh, to come and join us. Thank you all, all of you for, for, uh, for watching us. Please make sure you follow Expat Global uh, LinkedIn page um, and leave a subscribe on our YouTube channel so that uh, you help us keep making these, these wonderful interviews and episodes. Uh, so the first, the first question I would like, I would like to ask, um, and I'll start with Stefan. 
where does where does customer customer service team fit in an organization? Uh, uh, what if we're talking about small and medium sized companies, like uh, full of specialists, and and they just have some basic admin staff? Um, they have no special uh, customer service team or special uh, uh, people dedicated to that to that sector. Who is in charge of that? Is is this customer service restricted to a single department or or a single person? Yeah, I, I was looking at your question, uh, and thank you. Uh, so I had a little bit of time to think about it. Uh, the first part of your question that was always throwing me off is is pretty much every company that I've been responsible and been part of. Uh, it threw me off a little bit because everyone, everyone is responsible for taking care of the customer. Uh, customers are not, uh, you know, I, I used to be a mechanic in the back of the bike shop and you're, you're working on trying to solve a problem, fixing a bike. And all of a sudden you hear the doorbell that someone comes in and you're like, oh, you know, it's like, wait, customers aren't a distraction. They are the business, right? <laughs> yes, I wanted to solve this problem. And I think that holds true. We often all get into our problem. I'm working on building a new supply chain. I'm working on a piece of software. And so have, having that mindset of, you know, and then that carries over to Amazon, right? If you study their famous leadership principles, one of them is customer obsession, mm -hmm. right? Are we serving our customers? Now, there is then, you know, when you're talking about customer service as a function of customers need support, uh, they're trying to solve a particular customer problem. Again, whoever's closest to the ball uh, can help <laughs> them. But uh, for some of those problems that happen repeatedly and you haven't fixed them yet um, or challenges, certainly customer service, um, having some dedicated specialists makes sense. Um, but always start from that everyone takes care of the customer mindset. How can we solve problems at the root? And then you know, for say perhaps order help, right? Where's my order? It's almost Christmas time. Is my product going to show up on time? Uh, those are things we're having some specialized tools in customer service at Amazon. Uh, you know, Tom Wyland is the vice president of customer service and has been for years. Uh, Tom reported up into uh, supply chain because a lot of it was Amazon delivery packages, but vice president of customer service at various times, very close connection with senior leaders uh, across the company. Super. We'll get back to that to that question, and we'll spend some more. Uh, yeah. Elena, uh, yeah. So what what I can share here is my perspective from from our industry. So yeah, the global mobility industry, exactly. So I believe that customer service should not be seen just as a separate entity from the the entire com company. It's quite commonly used that if something bad happens, uh, we immediately redirect it to the customer support or customer care department, mm -hmm. which I don't think is entirely right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I strongly believe that we have to prevent that possible bad outcome in, and this, this should be the, the focus. In small and medium uh, enterprises especially, uh, the best thing you as an owner can do is to, to implement the customer care mentality from one department to another so that every single employee, regardless of their position in the company, can always act with the customer in mind. I think this is key. Whoever is close to the ball. <laughs> everybody. Uh, because every, everybody has a client. Everybody at the end of the day has a, a, a client somewhere. True, true. Uh, Modeling that from the top, I think, is great, Elena, because whoever's closest to the ball, if you see a problem, right, who can help move that forward? And you know, I'm yeah. sure we have a legion of stories. I can share some as the time comes. But then also the proactive listening to customers, right? We often think customer service is always a reactive function. Um, yeah. So it is famous to you when you, you live and work at Amazon. Jeff Bezos had the most, you know, just email Jeff. You have a problem? Just email Jeff. Um, and customers <laughs> could email Jeff directly. And those would get read, not always by Jeff, but by someone and get passed on. Uh, every customer outreach was taken very seriously. Uh, and that was modeled by the top. And then call customers, just call and listen to them, ask them some questions. Yeah. In our online yeah. world, it's easy to, to lose track of some of the things that just connect you personally with your customers uh, for yeah. real feedback and the relationship they have with you. Yeah, I love this with the uh, with the emails to the to Jeff Bezos. I really like that. Yeah, it's a it's a cool thing to do. 
But if you if you if you think about it, a uh, customer service um, for a very long time, and and even now in some in some industries is is usually regarded like like handling the mistakes or handling the complaints, right? But it has actually what you're saying is, it, I mean, it has become a true extension of the marketing and sales department in the end, right? Because it elevates the whole business. Exactly. Um, how can business owners, leaders, managers, how can we create such a customer-centric culture across the company? Because, I mean, is it something that you can actually teach? Is like a, a, a one-month intensive uh, program that I can take and I'll be super, uh, I don't know, have an amazing client service in me? Or, or how do they do that? How do we do it? I would like to, to take on, uh, on this, this, uh, the, this question. If yeah, you don't be mind. the first, be the first, please. <laughs> so I, I really think that this is not an easy job. And my belief and what I learned during the, my, my, uh, my activity and my experience is that everything starts with the, the recruitment process, which in my opinion is key. If a business owner you have, as a business owner, you have the customer in your blood and all you do is to design services, products with the customer in mind, then I strongly believe that your tribe, meaning your team, your employees should embrace the same goals, the same vision mm -hmm. and care for the customer. Uh, so I remember that a couple of years ago, uh, we designed, we redesigned the recruiting process and we did start from the leadership principles. And of course it was an assessment made internally. Uh, I have been asked, okay, let's put down all, the, all your principles in regards to the, you know, the business. And I remember that we wrote everything on a board. And the first thing that came into my mind was the customer. Yeah. The second thing was again, the customer, this came naturally. <laughs> And then the rest, knowledge, agility, curiosity, high standards, and so on. So actually, this is something that, in, 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 from my perspective, this starts with, the, you know, with who you bring in, in your tribe. You know, if they have this DNA, it's, it's so important. This is how actually I built uh, Xpat with the customer in mind. And all I wanted to do is to upgrade the mobility experience so that everybody, the HR, the expatriate, and service provider, to have a better experience in the process. And I can continue, but I better stop. Yeah. Yeah. Stefan? Well, I thought your question was interesting. Uh, you know, is it something you can learn or is it something you can but, teach? Yeah. You, can, you can teach everything, um, but people's capability, you know, I, I will never be Might Michael be limited. Jordan. Yeah, I, I will never be Michael Jordan. Uh, <laughs> my ability to have some limitations, uh, but I can learn to do a better layup. So, mm. so whether your customer, whether your employees, the employees you have today, um, just set the expectation they need to learn and set the standard, right? Because customers set the standard. So great customer experiences are more like that great restaurant you went to or the hotel you went to where you were really cared for. Um, and it wasn't just reactive when there was a problem. Right. We all, you know, you can see a good restaurant shine if you have a problem uh, and how they take care of you. So, yes, you should teach it and expect to teach. This is the standard we go for. And how can we even make that standard mm -hmm. higher? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and so where do we keep pushing on our standard and, and try to teach it? Some of the ways you teach it is I love what Elena said is it does start with who you hire because there are people that have deeper skills and capability. And so if you can pull that into your hiring process. Um, you know, customer order problem, it's Christmas time, right? I'm in charge of ordering inventory and, and making sure we deliver uh, inventory in time for Christmas. And we come across that where we had a software defect that resulted in selling two uh, dolls, uh, two dolls. Uh, uh, we sold two and there was a, a gift note, you know, so grandma said, uh, you know, to my lovely twin granddaughters, I hope you enjoy this dolls. We only had one in stock. Oh my God. Right. Uh, here's a Solomon moment, right? What do you do? Cut the doll in half, cancel <laughs> the order, right? And, and so you send it to customer service. I mean, those dolls have to be delivered. You made a promise to deliver them in the next 36 hours, 48 hours, two, three days. Um, at a customer obsessed company, what we did is everybody on their way home, and this was the cool doll, like nobody had this doll in stock. Everybody was giving this doll for Christmas. Well, in a customer obsessed company where everybody is customer service, uh, everybody on the floor says, okay, this is a problem. Everybody on our way home from work, will all stop at two stores. And guess what? We found a doll and yes, we paid full price yeah. and paid retail and we injected it into the supply chain. 
but that's customer obsession, right? Exactly. That's, of course, we're going to do that. Uh, what can we, we made a promise to customers we either shouldn't have made or, you know, but once we made it, we're all on the hook as a company to deliver. Yeah, we have to I deliver it. I don't know if you teach that, right? Uh, so Amazon self-selects because of their leadership principles, but then also as you're building software. Um, I had a leader who, he would read a proposal and it was usually very macro focused. There's this many potential customers and, you know, or it's a persona, you know, they made up and he just put it down and go, have you picked up the phone and called any clients about this? I know you haven't built it yet, right? But have you just called and said, we're thinking about building this how does that make you feel? Do you think you would use it? Get their sentiment. And so now all of a sudden, that was an expectation from the top. Of course, you've talked to some customers and he wants to know what they said. And if you said no, he'd be like, should we call some right now? Like he would stop the meeting, right? We, we drive our meetings by Outlook and heaven forbid, we stop the meeting and call a customer. Um, you know, so he would expect quotes or he'd say, he's like, tell me how this is going to work. Um, you know, come in, get a cup of coffee, open up your laptop. What actually happens? Right? What do I do? So it was this focus of very bifocal. Mm -hmm. um, and it came from the top, from the point we hired to everybody helps with problems to uh, even as we do our normal course of business, whether it's building software or solving. And we're thinking one, we're building services used by real people. So let's connect with those real people. And two, um, we're thinking both the macro and, and, and micro, because lots of real people. And, and two, um, every individual person does represent hundreds and thousands. So can we find, pat by looking at the individuals, we're not um, trying to do an impossible task, but we are trying to also see patterns. Right? Mm -hmm. So those mm -hmm. all come from the top. And those are three things you, you know, by modeling them, you can teach for. Super, yeah. super, super, Stefan. Uh, I remember Elena. At some point, you had you had like a post on social media, uh, and that and that brings me to my uh, to my next question. What factors uh, uh, do you think uh, matter most in delivering uh, on your customer service vision? Yeah, and that are... would be a question later on for Stefan as well. Yeah, you you are talking about that post uh, uh, with the uh, work for applause, not for applause. Exactly. Oh gosh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was very inspired um, at the time. Um, yeah, I believe that so many times we as people tend to communicate um, our will, yeah, what we want to do and always make it about us. us. And I think this is an extremely faulty approach from my perspective, because if you want your customers to be happy with your services or products and tell everybody about their wonderful experience, then... I think that you need to make it about them, not you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you should ask them what they want. If they don't know this yet, provide options for them to choose from. This is all a part of a bigger customer service strategy that comes, or at least should come at the core of, uh, of, uh, of any business. Yeah. Super. Stefan? Um. Let's hear the question again, because I want to make sure I answer the question, not just tell a story, even though the story could be fun. <laughs> so the, factor, the factors that would matter most in delivering the customer service vision. Yeah. Um, keeping the customers first and foremost, right, uh, is especially we do so much where somebody's on the other side of a screen or we don't even see a person. Um, wow. So, you know, finding, finding ways to drive customer connection. Right? How am I connecting with those customers? The second, uh, and, and so, you know, whether that's a mechanism of, of emails, whether it's questions, um, and be careful, right? How many of us have used a software uh, or used a mobile phone app and all of a sudden somebody who's trying to care says, uh -huh. tell us how you like this app. I'm like, get out of my way. I'm trying yeah, to buy an airplane ticket, out. right? <laughs> Well, you were doing great until you shoved yourself in front of me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or the websites say, please take our survey, please rate us. Right. Uh, so those factors are, you know, if you're think as Lena said, thinking about the customer, finding ways to connect with them, but also finding ways to just observe them and learn from those patterns. Right. Amazon may have great customer service. There's still some things they can learn. Right. I just bought a drill. 
Now they're showing me five more drills because apparently they think I need five more. <laughs> um, so, you know, finding, connect with customers, uh, set that expectation, uh, find ways to observe customers and build those metrics into your feedback loop. Uh, I think Delta Airlines does a great job. If you call them for customer service, one of the times I've gotten their, um, their, their version of a net promoter score was based on the service today that I provided you, if you were hiring for customer service in your company, would you hire me? I'm like, well, that's a really good question, right? Uh, because it's focused on their skill and ability, not necessarily on Delta, right? Uh, and it shows that they're focused on serving my needs. Um, so it's a great question. So connecting, observing, um, and then conversing. So uh, while we are further in screen, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's uh, you know, how do you have how do you have just regular conversations with your customers and create mm -hmm. those? A lot of us are doing that here. You mentioned LinkedIn post. Uh, <laughs> but there's a lot of companies that don't, right? <laughs> so every point of interaction, um, and then finally, in those, those last factors, you look across those three areas, what are the metrics that you try to understand on what really matters to your customer? So, you know, I was involved in a lot of shipping processes to Amazon, getting that box to your door as an e-commerce company, because that's, you put your credit card number in and magically a box shows up at your door. Um, we could measure customer happiness, we could measure customer whatever, but really at the end of the day is did that box get to the door when we promised and we said it would get to the door, yeah. right? Did we keep our promises? And so that was a pretty hard business metric. You know, how accurate was the promise that we made and how well, so we didn't make up a customers like us, customer happiness index. Um, we said, we made a promise. Did we keep our promise? Because if we keep our promises and deliver on our service, um, that's probably a good indicator of whether we did what we said we we're going to do. So we can control it, but will customers like it? Um, so I wouldn't yeah. go too far on making up, you know, customer um, customer metrics that are far away or keep them close to what your core service is. Super, super, excellent. Uh, before before moving on to the next question, a big a big hello to Don Bosman uh, from Serbia. Uh, we have here um, Mihai Stantiu from Kellogg, Bucharest, Romania, uh, Shraddha Mittal from India, uh, Martin uh, Van Zutman, and Brent Bergen from Glomotex in California. Thank you all for, for being with us. Um, so let's, let's talk about uh, the last time you were really, really impressed about, about uh, um, a service or a product or a company, and I invite our guests to share, to share their examples as well. Um, I'll briefly start with, with a basic, simple uh, uh, thing. I bought several books uh, from a bookstore a couple of weeks ago, and I had them delivered with a courier. I opened up the box expecting to see, well, books. Um, and, and I received, aside from the books, I received bookmark, a bookmark, a small pin, very nice, and wait for it, a greeting card that had a very nice quotation re, uh, taken from one of the books I had just bought, written by hand by one of the employees of the bookshop, wishing me that I really, well, they really hoped I would, I would enjoy uh, the books I bought from them, right? That really made my day, honestly. And it's not much, it's really not much, but it really made my day. And I'm certain as a client that I will, well, definitely go back the second time. No, no <laughs> question about it, obviously. <laughs> But even if, even if they're more expensive than others, I would still be inclined to buy from them. And another important thing, even if at some point in the future, they would do something that would upset me or, or they wouldn't deliver exactly as I would expect, I would forgive them and I would keep buying from them, you know? So Stefan, Amazon, Amazon is, is um, an iconic example, right? When it comes to customer service, almost everything, everything they do is about customers, obviously. So would you, would you tell us a few, a few, I don't know, a practical example, a specific example, a story, uh, something that in, was implemented and wowed the customers? Well, uh, those are two different questions sometimes, right? Uh, <laughs> Amazon is, is well known for being disciplined and rigorous, uh, particularly in data. Uh, and so some of Amazon's um, uh, wow is just its consistency, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, the consistency of 
You may not like the date it tells you on the website of mm -hmm. before you make the order, if it's going to arrive at this date, um, but they're going to hit that date and they're going to go, you know, to lengths of the ocean uh, to hit that date once they make a promise. And that may not wow people in the immediate transaction, right? Of course, mm -hmm. I ordered it and it, it came when they said it would. Where's the wow factor? But doing that for decades, um, that's a wow factor right? Doing mm -hmm. that at scale is a wow factor. Um, knowing that you can consistently count on it. Now, even that, that shopping experience, you know, early on in the interwebs, and you still see this, and I don't know why, uh, you can shop on a site and you're looking and it says, you know, this will ship in three to five days. Well, that's not really customer focused. I don't care when it ships. I care mm -hmm. when I get to hold it, right? When can I touch it? When will it arrive, right? Well, that's harder, right? Into Elena's earlier point, um, it's hard to say, well, because that's out of my control. I can, only, mm -hmm. I can only get it in a box and put it on a courier. I don't know when it's going to get to you. Well, go the extra mile for me, right? So Amazon did this a long time ago, uh, and there's now services that are selling themselves to other e-commerce companies to help you go. The customer cares about when it's going to arrive. Um, I think, you know, some of the things I was told at my, you know, Amazon early, very early days, like Amazon always had great, you know, great uh, uh, bookmarks uh, in, in the Amazon book packages. <laughs> um, you know, so it, it uh, shows up. I think the, the principle of folks on is remembering that each transaction is part of an overall relationship, right? And you mentioned that. So also, mm -hmm. um, there were some news articles several years back, but this continues to be true of, my order didn't arrive, we'll trust the customer, right? Uh, if this customer's bought from us many times before, um, just send them a free replacement, right? Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> maybe the customer's lying, right? I think there was a New York Times article that, that wrote about they didn't get their Xbox or they didn't get their PlayStation. Um, and, and when they shipped and Amazon just shipped it and they upgraded the shipping uh, so that it was there overnight the next day. And they couldn't believe that Amazon would just ship them a brand new one without making them go through a whole bunch of forms yeah, and, yeah. and bureaucracy to fill out. Uh, and, and so you can see this attitude through a number of things. If you've been a customer of Amazon for a long time and you make a refund, you know, do you get your money back when Amazon receives the product? No. Uh, Amazon says, no, we trust that you sent it back. Uh, and you know, we're going to give you your money back now. We're sorry you had a bad experience because it is about each transaction is part of this bigger relationship. So that, that isn't always the immediate wow that you described if I open the box and here's some of these mm. extra things, but um, it is a wow in a different way of I'm going to consistently, they're going to respect me. Like they're, they're, they know I'm, they're trusting me because I've had enough experience with them and they with me that mm. I am going to send the product back and return it. Now, what Amazon also does is it pushes things to say, how do we make that in control? So you can drop off a return at a local store and so, without even putting it back into a box, right? They keep looking for things. How do I take work off of the customer, right? Well, if I didn't like this mug and I wanted to send it back, um, I just take the mug to the store and show them my code and the store will process the packaging. It's more work Everything. taken yeah. off, right? <laughs> Uh, I do think there's other folks that think about other websites I've had that think about uh, taking work off the customer that, you know, I bought this watch. I mean, it had great packaging. It just came. It was a great experience. The whole delivery from the whole experience of ordering to delivery to actually unpacking. And right? I was getting pictures on my phone of where, where in the process uh, from manufacturer, et cetera. So I think managing expectations can really lead that wow factor um, mm -hmm. as well and looking for different ways to converse and connect with the customer uh, on the wow factor. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Elena, would you like to add something? Uh, yeah, I was thinking on, a, on a, let's say, a service that impressed me, uh, but uh, I don't have anything right now in mind like to, be, to make it very short. Uh, I like very much what uh, Stefan uh, just said, consistency is mm -hmm. extremely important. But now I, I just to, to think about our industry and to go more precise on, on how, how we should uh, have this customer perspective, I think that we should surprise your customer with 
unexpected things, you know. Uh, usually, I think we get unexpected exactly... positive delight. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Sorry. Good, good to mention that, of course. Uh, I think usually we get exactly what we order and that's fine, right? But it's common. Uh, delivering yeah. above and beyond is a great opportunity to outrun the competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because how do we do? How do we do that? How do we deliver uh, uh, above and beyond? Because that's clear. I mean, definitely, we of we course. have to do that, and we have to deliver yeah. that, right? But how do I, we? How do we do that? I think there are so many simple simple ways to stand out from the crowd. And for example, Stefan said Amazon has consistency. Yeah, consistency sounds like basic, right? Basic. It's basic. Keep your word. Yeah. For example, we so yeah. we can do in my opinion, so less for so much in the end. Uh, the first thing I have in mind is, yeah, that, that, that you have to keep your word in our industry. If you said as a consultant that you will deliver an answer to the client, an uh, assessment, anything, or whatever, an email by tomorrow at 5 p.m., make sure you do it. And if you want to really impress the client, try to send the answer a bit earlier. So mm -hmm. it's, it's quite basic, you know? Um, on uh, another thing that I learned in, in, uh, in my career is that we have to learn about them and their businesses. And as we mentioned before, we have to listen to the customer and always we have to show that we care and we don't, yeah, we, we, we don't provide, you know, goods in front of their door. We interact with the clients. And when we interact with the client so much, we have to actually show that we care. And this careness is quite something I consider basic. And I will give you a very basic example. For example, if you are a lawyer or a counselor at law, immigration senior, for mm -hmm. example, and you have a case, yeah? And you, Madalina, or you, Stefan, yeah, Stefan, you would be transferred by your company to Germany and for, a reason the the lawyer or the immigration senior would announce you that unfortunately the reunification family process cannot go on because of a something in the law, right? And that consultant and he gives you like 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 a whole phrase from the from the immigration uh, exactly. It sends you law. a blunt email with the article from the immigration law stating that okay. It's not possible for the process to happen. Well, when this happens, I don't really think that that person should be in this industry. He, 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 that person did the job, right? He informed, he, she informed the client that, okay, it's not possible. Compliance, immigration law, and so on. So you just announce the, you know, the, the client bluntly that it's not possible. I don't think that this person should be really in the industry. So this is so important. For, for us in our industry to show empathy because we are talking about, you know, people's lives and, you know, while you have an ass assignment, actually it's a relocation process and the relocation process is actually the fourth uh, most uh, uh, complex process in somebody's life. So you have to show, you know, basic care and basic empathy and you have to embellish your knowledge uh, and know-how and your project management and so on into much more. Yeah. I love, I love what you're saying, Elena. I think in the, the services, um, you know, meeting your promise, right? Keeping your word and meeting your promise, you know, certainly makes sense. Serving, you know, I had a mentor early on, I think it was like 12, uh, you know, and, and he beat out of me this idea that the customer is always right. I'm like, oh, the customer's always right. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> the customer is not always right, because otherwise I wouldn't need you. Um, but the customer always should be served, right? And that's the, how do you serve your customer? How do you serve your customer? And peeling back to that need, you know, in your example, it's like, well, I told you, here's the facts, you know, this yeah. very German of you. I know the law. Uh, I know the law. <laughs> here's the law, right? Yeah. You're very German. Thank you. Um, but, you know, when I hire people, right, we're bringing them to Seattle, or, you know, they're bringing their family, they're bringing, they're relocating four or five people, changing schools. Um, even in that process, sometimes like, well, here's the job. Would you like the job? And it's like, well, that's actually not the bigger decision. The bigger decision is, do I move these four or five people 
that I'm building a life to, to this new city, uh, right? And all the other things. And now we're going to be further away from grandma and grandpa. And you think about that as a service. Like, how do you, what's the level of service that I provided versus mm -hmm. did I do my job, right? Did, so communication is key, right? And just on the e-commerce side, uh, you know, a wild thing that also got a lot of news is when Amazon first launched streaming video, um, th uh, they observed the quality of the video and customers would get notices of, we noticed you bought this video and it kept breaking up. We've gone ahead and given you a refund and a free movie down the road. Uh, I was like, you know, you, we didn't even have to tell you our service was bad and you fixed it, right? You know, uh, or we didn't have to tell you your service was bad. You noticed your service was bad and you fixed it and you're trying to make it better. Wow, right? Um, I didn't even have to tell you. Uh, and I think that's great. Yeah. You know, as, as service professionals, when I'm serving you, can I anticipate and can I self-monitor and then, you know, not only keep my word and keep my promises, but really look at what's the, what's the level of service that I provide. Excellent. Excellent. Um, uh, and one, <coughs> one, uh, one possible, well, last question. Uh, what would be, what would be a, a big, a big, um, a big mistake uh, you've made in the past that, that taught you, uh, let's say a valuable uh, lesson about about retaining customers, keeping customers close. Um, Both Elena and Stefan, please, Stefan. Stefan, please. Okay. Be the first. <laughs> I've the made road. more mistakes. I think that means I've made more mistakes. Uh, uh, I'm <laughs> sure I've made more mistakes. Uh, so, oh boy, if I, if I made a lot of mistakes. Um, well, and the biggest mistake is if you haven't made mistakes, you know that's okay. You're going to make them. Uh, it's how you react to them, right? Uh, I think my first job interview, I spilled my water at the restaurant onto the guy that was interviewing me, right? And it's like, um, you know, I'm never going to get the job. But it's how you react. You're going to make mistakes, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's how you react from them and improve them. Uh, I'll use it. it. Wasn't my mistake in this case, but it's still a good example. Uh, Amazon we can have a tendency to make decisions and based on our personality and kind of principles and customer service. Uh, Amazon came across the, uh, uh, the, they discovered that uh, they had sold a number of Kindle books for a pirated version of, uh, of a book. Um, well, uh, it was George Orwell's 1984 or something. Uh, mm. And Amazon made a policy. Not decision. good. We, Not good. <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't want to uh, we don't want to sell pirated books, right? Um, Obviously, you know we don't want to sell pirated books. Um, so uh, it was a Kindle book. We'll just take it off the Kindle, right? We'll just we'll just we'll just pull them off of everyone's Kindle, right? Yeah. How did customers feel about that? Right? They didn't yeah. replace it with you know it's like well Something we took the pirated version off and we gave you for free uh, the better version, right? Uh, they didn't. Um, you know, they didn't announce it. They announced they it announced somehow. It. No, right. uh, you know, if you're in the middle of the book, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, you can't watch this movie anymore. I'm sorry, you're yeah. in the middle yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, so it's just a bad execution of the decision. So we started asking some of the questions as we were making customer facing. Are there any unintended consequences? How could this be perceived by uh, customers in different places um, in terms of meeting their needs? You know, we had a different issue where I literally, because sometimes the mistakes aren't yours. They're a subcontractor that you used. Mm -hmm. They're a software that you used, right? But at the end of the day, you own it. It's your, course, relationship it's your responsibility. To the yeah, it's your responsibility. So we had some software failures. We literally shipped double product and sometimes triple product to customers around the world. I call it the worldwide morality test. <laughs> I know who I shipped everything to. I have their credit card, right? Uh, you know, should I charge them if they don't return it? Right? Uh, I think that no, that's blackmail. I'm sure there's a you know that's a scam, right? Madalena, here's a package. If you don't pay for it, I'm going to charge you, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, so how do you deal with that, right? There's different laws in the countries, uh, and so we really had to go through how do we take work off the customer? How do we um, should we offer them a rebate or a discount or promotion coupon if they do send it back? Because they did extra work they didn't ask to do. Um, eBay sales spiked that you're not. Um, so, you know, sometimes you have to sort through that. Or sometimes you have, a, I had another issue where 
because of a software gap, uh, a bunch of prices were reduced to a penny, but they were prices on products that sellers were selling, right? They were selling on, on the marketplace for which mm. I was responsible, right? And the service provider that a bunch of sellers were using, it's a bad service provider, right? It wasn't even my software. And stuff went out the door to customers and sellers are responsible for the prices they set. It's kind of yeah. the law. Man. So, you know, working through not just fixing the problem, but fixing the relationship in that issue as well. It's like, hey, that is your responsibility. We're going to try to help you with this other thing. Um, so, yeah, the principle is you're going to make mistakes or you're going to be near people who make mistakes. Congrats. Uh, how can you help make the relationship right and the mm. transaction right? Right. I think to your point, Madeline, is people are willing to forgive a little bit if you've built that track. They are. On. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, yeah. And you ask for it and <laughs> uh, and and you kind of you give opportunities to make it right. Uh, my my favorite story is, uh, you know, my kids know this, too, is feedback is a duty. So a friend of mine who was in customer service at Amazon, so this is learned versus just inherent. He went with his, he went with his, uh, his grandpa to go buy ice cream uh, at a store and the box had nuts on the picture of the ice cream box. Okay. So you would and imagine. He opened, he opened it up and there was no nuts <laughs> on the ice cream. He's like, oh, well, I still had ice cream. It was good. And his grandpa sat him down and said, no, we need to write the company. They yep. need to know about this. Feedback is a duty. Uh, and, and the eight-year-old was like, I just want to go ride my bike. And he, I was like, no, no, we have to write the company. So they write the company, right? This is before email. And about two weeks later, uh, kids forgotten all about this. Knock on the door, uniform, you know, there's a van out front. And the guy says, hello, I'm from the ice cream company. You helped us find a problem with one of our machines. And we just wanted to bring you some ice cream. And they literally brought him a truck full of ice cream. With and nuts in it. With nuts in it. got all his friends <laughs> and they all had ice cream, right? Uh, and so even in giving feedback, like you want to reinforce people bringing you bad news because it gives you an opportunity to improve, right? And so I would say one of the things I started to get more comfortable with my mistakes is how do I reinforce people on my team, reinforce mm -hmm. my customers, Like, how can I make it better? What, what, uh, what was great, but what, you know, what was one thing you just could imagine would be awesome and how can I make it better? Uh, setting that factor, I think it helps with the wow factor. Super, super. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Stefan. I, I love what And Stefan it, just said. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks for sharing Stefan. I think it's, uh, it's really amazing. And I, I'm, I remember how in the <coughs> beginning of my, uh, Uh, of my global, global mobility um, experience. Uh, I work with juniors, I work with middle uh, seniors and so on. And um, I remember that, you know, this was in my DNA, like, okay, we have to focus very much on the, on the, on the customer. And I remember that literally one of our consultants some years ago, uh, she was telling me like, I, I feel that we are spoiling so much the customer. Why should we do all, all this around? And for me, it was like, you know, it's kind of a, you know, the balance sheet, put more and more, add more and more for you, because it might come a time when you will make a mistake and the client will be there for you, you know, so this really can, can happen. So yeah, it's about trust and building this, this relationship. And if you have a very strong relationship, uh, you will definitely keep the client on and on and for For us in the consultancy and the mobility business is is so so important it's it's hard to to lose a client you know it's we're talking about b2b here it's not b2c so it's it's quite some it's sensitive and coming back to to the question madalina mm. uh, the valuable lesson uh about retaining customers i think that um i i thought about this and um i think that uh precious lesson that I got from my parents, actually. My parents are both entrepreneurs with different businesses. Uh, and I learned from them that I should never take the customer for granted. Yeah. Uh, and I saw business owners that instead of continuing focusing on the customer, they started to focus more on their time, on their own needs, while assuming that 
customers. The clients will, will come anywhere, right? Will, yeah, we'll keep yeah. giving them business like they have in the past. Nobody says you should not allocate time for yourself. Not at all. Of course, this is mandatory because only investing in you can give to mm. others. But to eliminate the customer focus and to take it for granted because anyway, there is a market. Uh, yeah, I believe it's a, it's a huge mistake. Usually this happens with uh, millions of companies. And I think that even big companies, they, they fail. And we have so many examples. Um, but as a business owner, all I keep in mind, uh, and this is my message for you know, other partners in, in the industry, that uh, every day should be considered the day one. Yeah, super, super. I've stolen a quarter of an hour of your, of your life and your time. Yeah. We were supposed to, <laughs> to finish quarter of an hour ago. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan and Elena, for taking the time to join us and for all the great insights and stories you shared with us. Um, for all the attendees, uh, well, and for all the possible future uh, uh, watchers of our, of our session, uh, if you came in later and you want to rewatch the session, you can check out our YouTube page and find there all the sessions we had so far. Um, this will be this will be our last uh, Nexus session until September. We're taking a, a short break in August. Uh, so thank you all very much once again, and uh, we wish you a great a great summer. Thank you, Stefan, again. Thank you, Elena. And thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>